Have you ever wondered if there are signs we can look for that indicate Christ's return? This question has piqued the curiosity of many, leading to a journey of discovery in the pages of the Bible. The concept of the Second Coming is one that is both profound and deeply rooted in the Christian faith. It is an event foretold in the Scriptures, an event that will mark a significant turning point in the history of our world. The Bible, in its divine wisdom, does not leave us in the dark about this monumental occasion. It provides us with signs, indications that we can look out for, that herald the nearing of Christ's return. These signs, however, are not intended to pinpoint an exact date. They are not to be used as a celestial calendar, counting down to the day of the Second Coming. Instead, these signs serve as a spiritual barometer, a way for us to gauge the spiritual climate of our times. They encourage readiness, vigilance, and a constant state of spiritual preparedness. They remind us to keep our lamps trimmed and burning, to stay awake and not be caught off guard. The Bible warns us not to be like the five foolish virgins who were unprepared when the bridegroom came and were left outside the wedding feast. Instead, we are called to be like the five wise virgins who were ready and waiting, their lamps full of oil, prepared for the bridegroom's arrival. These signs are like road markers on a journey, pointing us in the right direction, helping us navigate our spiritual journey towards the second coming. They are not intended to incite fear or anxiety, but rather to incite hope and anticipation in the hearts of believers. So without further ado, let's dive into these signs one by one. Let's embark on this journey of discovery together, exploring the prophetic signs that point towards the return of Christ. Let's delve into the scriptures and uncover the mysteries that lie within, waiting to be discovered. Now let's dive into these signs one by one. The first sign that the Bible provides is the increase in knowledge. This is found in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 4. The verse states, But you, Daniel, keep this prophecy a secret. Seal up the book until the time of the end, when many will rush here and there and knowledge will increase. Now let's take a moment to ponder on the depth of this verse. It's fascinating how this prophecy, written centuries ago, seems to mirror the state of our world today. We live in an era where we witness a dramatic surge in knowledge. We experience it every day. The internet, our smartphones, the constant stream of information at our fingertips. It's an explosion of knowledge, unlike anything the world has ever seen before. But the verse doesn't stop at the increase in knowledge. It also mentions that many will rush here and there. This could be seen as a reference to our globalized world, where travel has become commonplace. Not only are we traveling more than ever for leisure or business, but we also live in a world where people, goods and information move across borders at an unprecedented speed. Consider this. A few decades ago, the idea of video calling someone on the other side of the world in real time was pure science fiction. Today, it's just another part of our daily routine. Our world has become a global village where information and people are constantly on the move. So what does all this mean in the context of the prophesied return of Christ. Well, it could be that this surge in knowledge and global movement is setting up the stage for the fulfillment of other prophecies. The rapid spread of information could play a crucial role in spreading the gospel to all nations, which is another sign of Christ's return we'll discuss later. As we can see, this sign is already prevalent in today's world. The increase in knowledge and the wide travel prophesied in the Bible are evident all around us. It's an exciting time to be alive, witnessing the unfolding of these ancient prophecies. The second sign is that the gospel will be preached to all nations. This prophecy can be traced back to the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 14, where it was said, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Now, it's important to understand what this means in the context of our modern world, when this prophecy was made over 2,000 years ago, the concept of the whole world and all nations was vastly different from what we know today. The Earth's population was significantly smaller, and the known world was limited to certain geographical areas. Yet, the prophecy stood firm, stating that the Gospel would reach all corners of the globe. Fast forward to today. We live in a world where information travels faster than the speed of light. Technology has made it possible for us to connect with each other, 
across continents in a matter of seconds, the gospel, the good news of Christ, is no exception. It has been translated into many languages, making it accessible to billions of people worldwide. Christianity, the faith built on this gospel, has spread far and wide. It has found a home in the hearts of people from every walk of life, every culture, every nation, from remote villages in Africa to the bustling cities of Europe, from the icy landscapes of Antarctica to the tropical islands of the Pacific. The gospel has reached, and continues to reach, the farthest corners of the earth. This widespread availability and acceptance of the gospel can be seen as a fulfillment of the prophecy. It's a testament to the enduring power and universal appeal of its message, a message of love, forgiveness and salvation. But what does this mean for us? It means that we are living in extraordinary times, times prophesied centuries ago. It means that we are part of a story much larger than ourselves. We are living in an era where the gospel has reached the farthest corners of the globe. We are witnessing the unfolding of a prophecy, the second sign of the return of Christ. The third sign to be aware of is the arrival of false prophets. This is a significant warning that is not to be taken lightly. In Matthew 24, 24, we find a potent prophecy that says, For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. This verse serves as both a caution and a call to vigilance for all of us. False prophets are not a new phenomenon. Throughout history, they have emerged, claiming to possess divine knowledge and the truth. However, in these times, their presence is predicted to increase dramatically. The danger lies not merely in their existence, but in their ability to mislead many. These individuals are not just misinformed or misguided. They are masters of manipulation, capable of performing great signs and wonders to deceive. This deception is not just a slight diversion from the truth. It's a dangerous detour that can lead many astray. The false prophet's aim is to distort the truth, to create confusion, and to lead people away from the path of righteousness. They prey on the vulnerable, the desperate, and those hungry for spiritual guidance. So, how do we guard ourselves against such deception? The key lies in discernment. Discernment is the ability to judge well. It's the capacity to distinguish truth from falsehood, to separate the wheat from the chaff. To develop discernment, we must immerse ourselves in the truth. We must familiarize ourselves with the teachings of Christ, study the scriptures, and seek wisdom in prayer. In these challenging times, discernment is not just a helpful skill, it's a vital shield. With it, we can sift through the noise, identify the falsehoods, and cling to the truth. Without it, we risk being swept away by the tide of deception. In this era of information overload, discernment is our beacon, guiding us through the murky waters of misinformation and towards the shore of truth. This sign reminds us to be discerning and hold fast to our faith. Let's remember to stay vigilant, to seek wisdom, and most importantly, to hold fast to our faith. In this way, we can navigate through the arrival of false prophets and remain steadfast on our journey. The fourth sign is the increase in lawlessness. This significant marker is outlined in the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 12, where the scripture says, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. This passage paints a grim picture of a societal decline into lawlessness, where crime, corruption, and a general disregard for laws become commonplace. Now let's delve more deeply into this. The term lawlessness doesn't merely refer to a rise in crime rates. It's a broader concept, encompassing the erosion of moral standards, the breakdown of social norms, and the disregard for authority and laws. It's about the loss of respect for the rule of law and the principles that keep society functional and orderly consider the world we live in today. We see corruption seeping into the highest echelons of power, where leaders twist laws to suit their interests. We see the moral fabric of society fraying, with deceit and treachery becoming normalized. We see a shocking disregard for human life, dignity and rights across the globe. These are not isolated incidents, but pervasive trends, signs of a world spiraling into lawlessness. The scriptures warn us that this lawlessness will lead to a chilling consequence. The love of most will grow cold. When laws are flouted with impunity, when corruption and injustice reign, it's not just societal order that's threatened. It's our capacity for compassion, empathy and love. The rampant lawlessness can harden hearts, making us indifferent to the suffering of others. 
but it's not all doom and gloom. These signs are not meant to scare us, but to prepare us. They serve as a call to action, urging us to uphold justice, to resist corruption, and to foster love in a world where it's becoming increasingly scarce. Again, this sign seems to mirror our current world situation. But remember, even in the midst of chaos and lawlessness, there's always room for hope, for change, and for the return of righteousness. The final sign is the rebirth of Israel. This is a profound prophecy found in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 21 and 22. The prophet Ezekiel, speaking the words of the Lord, declared that the people of Israel would be gathered from among the nations, brought into their own land and formed into one nation. This prophecy, written over 2,000 years ago, came to fruition in the 20th century. In 1948, the modern state of Israel was born, marking a significant moment in history. This event was not just of political significance, but of profound spiritual importance, symbolizing the fulfillment of God's promise to his people. The rebirth of Israel was not an accident or a mere coincidence. It was a divine orchestration, a testament of God's faithfulness to his promises, and a clear sign pointing towards the imminent return of Christ. This sign was fulfilled in the last century and reinforces the imminence of Christ's return. So, we've discussed the five signs of Christ's return. Let's take a moment to recap. We've seen the dramatic increase in knowledge, with information now at our fingertips like never before. The gospel too is being preached to every corner of the globe, crossing barriers and reaching nations. Then there's the rise of false prophets, deceiving many with their false teachings and leading them astray. We also can't ignore the rampant lawlessness, a clear sign of society's moral decay. Lastly, the rebirth of Israel, a nation once scattered, now gathered back in its homeland, fulfilling prophecy. But what does this all mean for our world today? It means we're living in times foretold centuries ago. These signs are not meant to scare us, but to prepare us. They prompt us to remain vigilant, to keep our eyes open to the world around us, to be ready. Remember, these signs are not for predicting the exact date, but for encouraging readiness and vigilance. Keep watch, for you do not know the day nor the hour.